Thanks for joining us for the Executive Series. Today I'm speaking with Richard Seville, who is the CEO and Managing Director of Oracobre. Richard, it's really good to talk to you. And you, Tom? Uh, particularly given the fact that you've just reported numbers, uh, which must have been quite satisfying. Yes, it was a very good result, a strong result. Uh, production was up, uh, pricing was up, margins were up. In fact, we had a, uh, a record margin of 67%. It was a very strong year. Now, are you uh, sometimes surprised by the negativity around uh, the predictions or forecasts for lithium prices uh, over the course of the next couple of years? Well, there's a bit of a disconnect here between, uh, between the behaviours of uh, long-term uh, view, long-term interests, and short-term. And of course, the short term looks at what's happening in the, in, a, in the market today. But on the other side, the long term is looking at securing supply and long term growth and long term demand. Uh, so if we look there, we've seen uh, uh, transactions occur with POSCO purchasing an asset from Galaxy for $280 million. Uh, that's, a, that's a sure indication of uh, concern about long term supply. Uh, and that's an important transaction in terms of the way other projects can become valued as a result. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So if we were to apply that kind of uh, 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 way of valuing our, our exploration assets in Kaushari, and then that would be of a similar value. Uh, it's an underdeveloped asset of similar scale um, and, um, and there's a point of value on it. Indeed, and uh, I suppose the, the other thing to point out is that uh, Asian uh, interests in terms of securing supply have been very active uh, over the course of the last 12 months in particular. Uh, indeed, indeed. So, I mean, uh, if we can look at POSCO there, we can look at our own register in the same way. So, in order for us to, uh, to fund our development of our our significant expansion at Oleros, where we're going to increase production by one and a half times, and an increment of one and a half times. Uh, we've had TTC come on as a 15% shareholder. Uh, we did that placement earlier on the year at $7.50 a share, and that's a real vote for a vote of confidence for the future. Indeed. Now, uh, you're uh, about to embark on an important stage of development, stage two, and you've spoken around, uh, around the issue of how much you've learnt from the first sure. iteration. Yes. Uh, well, what's the most important aspect? Well, I think the most important aspect when you look at the de-risking of stage two is that we're doing it off the back of all the learnings from stage one. Uh, when we did stage one, we were the first new uh, lithium from brine producer in 20 years. Uh, we were doing it at 4,000 metres. We were doing it as a, with a brine that nobody had processed before. And there were some learnings there, both from an engineering design point of view and an operational management point of view. We have all that behind us now. So looking in the future, uh, we, uh, we will have, a, I, be, I believe, a, relative, a relatively uh, easy implementation in comparison. Now, the other important issue is uh, the, the, the pipeline, if you like, for the development of uh, electric vehicles. And when you look out over the course of the, the next uh, 10 to 15 years, how do you describe it to people who might not have necessarily had the penny drop? Well, one of the problems about that, Tom, is that we're sitting in Australia and that discussion really isn't happening. But if you go to the other side of the world, if you go to Europe, the discussion about the electrification of transport is big, big news. Uh, when you go to China and you look at the pollution issues there, then it's huge news. So, uh, so there's real, real government impetus uh, in these different jurisdictions. Uh, so there's a program, uh, 3030, which is looking at 30% penetration of motor vehicles worldwide by 2030. And if we looked at that on 100 million uh, vehicles, that's 30 million vehicles a year. So, so it's, it's completely dwarfing. There's a real revolution happening right now. And that needs to be supplied by our lithium. Uh, and simply, it's 50,000 tonnes of lithium carbonate per million tonnes of vehicle, a million vehicles. Uh, so we're, we're talking about very rapid demand growth on our products uh, and uh, potentially one and a half million tonnes demand uh, uh, in, in that time period from 250,000 tonnes an hour. So six times multiple. So within that context, you occupy an enviable position of being one of the lowest cost producers in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, is that going to continue to be the case? Uh, yes, it is. In fact, we should improve our operating costs. Uh, we are, we're not quite at full production rate on stage one, so we have some economies that we develop there. We can then go through our optimization, and then we get another step up in, uh, or step down in operating costs uh, with the expansion. Uh, so we, we will maintain our position at the bottom of the cost curve uh, with our cousins on the other side of the Andes in Chile uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll maintain these kind of margins.
Richard, it's always good talking to you. Thanks for your time. Pleasure, Tom. And thanks for joining us for the Executive Series.